Last thing I wanted to hit on was the uh, Academic Prowess Bowl up in Seattle that was a, a rainstorm and everything else that you could think of. Uh, Oregon, 26, Washington, 16. Cristobal's comments after the game. I, I pulled these up specifically. I wanted to read them. Everything played into Mario Cristobal's hand from his rival, repeatedly placing his foot in his mouth to the weather that allowed Travis Dye and the Ducks to obliterate the Huskies on the ground. Oregon erased an early deficit, quieted the crowd by the half, and then snuffed anything interesting out of this game in front of a mostly empty Husky stadium in the second half. The Ducks won 26-16. They are 8-1 and one with a one-game lead in the Pac-12 North, and after a week of playing everything close to the vest, Oregon's fourth-year coach unleashed when he reached the visiting locker room. Those fucking guys right there, Cristobal said of Washington, captured through multiple players' live social media feeds, which, again, I don't know why players would be live-streaming their coach in a locker room after a game, but either way, uh, he said... Washington represents everything that's wrong with football. So when you kick their ass, you let them know it. Okay. So before this game, Jimmy Lake, of course, saying all these things about how they are not recruiting rivals with Oregon. They recruit against higher academic schools like Notre Dame and Stanford and blah, 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 which is just a joke. I mean, he, yeah, honestly, he might deserve to be fired because of the comments, but either way. Cristobal, I don't know that a 10-point win is an ass-kicking, first off. Uh, second, Jimmy Lake punting in that position late in that ball game. What are you doing? Like, I, 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 I almost don't know that he's going to get another season. Oregon, as far as an ass-kicking, total stats and whatnot, yes. Washington had 166 total yards in this game. They were up 9-3 to three at one point. Uh, but Oregon had 427 total yards. They ran for 329 on Washington. This was a bludgeoning that ended with only a a 10 point spread between the teams. I uh, you know I Jimmy Lake. By the way, did you see this at the uh, at the end of the game? The AD had to issue a uh, statement because Jimmy Lake appeared to shove and strike his own player on the sideline. God. Like towards the end of the game, I he he struck it. The like, kid wore a helmet, and he slapped yeah. the kid on the helmet because the kid shoved another player that was running out of bounds. And instead of, like, catching him or kind of keeping him from falling, he shoved the kid. Yeah. It, it, yeah. But, but no, here, no. here's the thing. Here's the, So I didn't, see, I didn't see that in real time. But also, like, Jen Cohen issued the statement because enough people were making, and I don't think that people should – be worrying about this crap. But this Jim is the same Cohen thing when, should the statement Jim Cohen should make is is he's coaching his kid up. Okay, shut the hell up. Yeah. If that's your child, then one person has the right to have any comment on that. The parent of that child. Yes. And that yes. child. And that child. That child is a nineteen or twenty year old grown ass man. All right. The, the Who coaches just shoved another opponent. The coaches that that have the capability of going through that without anything popping up for them is the ones that are actually winning that you don't have controversy around them anyway, right? And Jimmy Lake, with his comments earlier this week, kind of put himself out there for everything to be scrutinized. And I, I don't know what to Jimmy make of Jimmy Lake. Jimmy Lake has a lot to be criticized for. Coaching this kid up, popping him in the helmet. I don't think that's one of them. Let's, I'm with you. Let's, let's get over ourselves, please. This is a grown-ass man playing a very, like, Contested collision sport. Being popped in the helmet is is nothing. It's the le- it's what we do when we celebrate. Why is it wrong to do it when you're coaching? Like, don't, don't act like we're if you struck a kid. Fuck you. <laughs> struck a kid. Dang man. What are we do? What are we doing? All right, Jimmy Lake is an idiot. Okay, and he yeah. deserves to be treated like an idiot. But let's criticize him for the things that he says and the things that he does. That's actually wrong. All right. Let's criticize him for being a mediocre coach and let's criticize him for saying stupid things. All right. Washington is no different than Oregon. They're literally the same. They're recruiting the same kids. The reason they settle for kids that they're trying to win over over Stanford is because they can't get the kids that go to Oregon. Okay. Because Oregon is just a much cooler place to be than Washington. And some of that is, is a Nike thing. And some of that is the coaches at Washington aren't excited to be around. Yeah. Yeah. You're, uh, you're right. You're hundred percent right. Uh, but but, but he, anybody who wants to use the word struck a kid, that's, that's somebody that's, who's never been struck in their life. That's also somebody that doesn't understand coaching at all. Like, it just does not get it. The, they probably don't understand a lot about parenting either, by the you, way. You not probably, that, you're probably right about that. The end of this game, 
where Washington gets the ball with two minutes and nine seconds left. And they have three straight incompletions, and it's fourth and ten at their own ten with a minute 57 left. And you are already down by ten points. What is... This is, this is where uh, you're... Yeah, sorry, sorry. For. You're down by eight points, yeah. right? Yeah. While I can understand the safe coaches, you're only down one possession. You want to try and, and maybe make the other team make a mistake. I get that. But... But that other team has the lead. They're right. not going to make the... Like, if the other team was behind, then, yeah, they might make a mistake. But what, what do you think? You're going to pick six? They're not going to throw the football. And instead, in trying to make the other team make the mistake, they, in turn, made the mistake and turned it into a two-score game because they punted the ball or the, the, they snapped the ball and the punter couldn't hold on to it. It goes out of the back of the end zone, you know, whatever. It's a safety. But you, you don't give your kids a chance to win the game. And and I understand Dylan Morris did not exactly play well. I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves here. For the game, he was 15 out of 27 passing for 111 yards and one touch or one uh, interception. Excuse me. They they were not. I I don't know what you do there. Like they are going to have to fire at least John Donovan. But there are so many people that are not in on Jimmy Lake that I don't know that you can afford to give him another season because. The season wait, wait, ticket holders are, we, are bought are out. Are thinking they're going to? Yeah, there's a possibility. I mean, it's it's, it's only his second no. season. His first year nobody, was a COVID no, season. Nobody believes that, right? Nobody believes that. This I is a team that so. lost to Montana before the season started. No, Jimmy Lake's not coming back next year, Gary. Nobody nobody on this coaching staff is going to survive this. It, this is, And it's not just the Oregon. I mean, they only got beat by 10, by a, by a top five team. Right, but this is but there, nobody, nobody, nobody is surviving this coaching staff. This team is bad. This team is underperformed, and they've lost a lot of games that they should have won. No, yeah. no, they're not coming back. We, we, we're having a we're having a wasteful conversation. This is pointless. You're probably right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.